aviation is key to connecting and bringing people together. But as the industry continues to grow, so too are the questions surrounding sustainability. The Aerospace Technology Institute is driving the technology strategy for the UK aerospace sector. Their goal is simple but ambitious, achieving net zero carbon emissions for commercial aircrafts by 2050. I'm Olivia Kinghorst and I'm here in Davos to speak with Gary Elliott, Chief Executive Officer, and Jacqueline Castle, Chief Technology Officer from ATI. So welcome to Davos, Gary and Jacqueline. I gather it's your first time here in the beautiful mountains. It is, yes. It's fabulous. <laughs> I hope you've already had a great start. Uh, let's dive right in. ATI is in a prime position to drive the future of the aerospace sector, especially within the UK. So just tell us what your mission is and why that is so critical. Yeah, well, we're quite a unique company. So we're independent um, of both government and industry, but equally we're in partnership with industry and government. And our mission is very simple to invest in complex research and development in the commercial aerospace sector and trying to create a sustainable um, next generation um, industry that is capable of allowing people to fly across the world in a sustainable way. So quite a large mission, quite a complex mission, but one that's super exciting and one that we've very much focused on. Yeah. And we have real opportunity to, to sort of convene people that are required to um, drive innovation in the UK. Uh, so we bring together lots of experts and lots of specialists and uh, deal with all of the different industry players within the UK and, and even globally um, to push forward the strategy to sort of drive a sustainable flight for the future. Now, the work of the ATI is really focused on developing new technologies to support the industry and drive it forward. What would you say have been the major milestones of progress that you have seen over the last decade? Well, we've been uh, 10 years in this uh, in this game and we've been investing substantially. We've invested some 3.5 billion pounds to date, so circa about 400 million pounds per annum in all a whole range of different technologies from next generation engines, uh, the Ultrafan engine with Rolls-Royce, next generation wings with Airbus um, for their next aircraft, and a whole range of suppliers that are, are important su to supporting those uh, key activities. So, so really quite a big deal, um, some 500 uh, companies have been supported in over 400 projects in that time time frame. So it's quite a big deal and spread across the whole of the UK with lots of international companies doing their activities uh, in the UK at the same time. And Jacqueline, maybe you can touch more on some of the more technical milestones that have been achieved over the past years. Yeah, well, Gary mentioned um, the UK really has a, a prime op opportunity to be at the forefront of driving innovation because uh, some of the critical sort of technologies that are required for sustainable flight for the future are around the engines and the airframe aerodynamics. Um, so the Ultrafan project that Gary mentioned that Rolls-Royce have developed is the largest high bypass ratio engine uh, technology demonstrator, which they've just sort of tested to full power. So that's been one really key project. Um, and also we work closely with Airbus and their wing um, centers of excellence, which are based in the UK. Uh, because the wing aerodynamics were really a key driver to sort of improving the efficiency of aircraft for the future. Two of the key projects that we mentioned earlier um, have multiple partners involved in them and a lot of those are SMEs and all of the supply chain within the UK that contribute. So um, it, there's really a, a strong sort of uh, collaboration across all of the different projects that we're involved in. So in this global race, where does the UK currently stand and how can it remain competitive going forward? Yeah, look, the UK is definitely in a competitive position. We're the second largest aerospace uh, supply chain company, uh, a country, sorry, in the world after the United States. We've got a competitive um, ecosystem all the way from academia through to applied research development and manufacture, from Airbus to Rolls-Royce to GKN to SMEs and to disruptive technology that really is making a difference in artificial intelligence, new materials. So we're in a super position. Really important that we collaborate internationally and retain that. It is an international sector. We can't do everything. So, so collaboration is important, but we are in a great competitive place and attractive for people to move to the UK and we've seen lots of examples of that uh, in the 10 years that we've been doing this. And of course when we speak about collaboration we're talking of course with industry, with government, with SMEs, with multinationals, it's really the whole range there. 
Absolutely. The entire ecosystem is important and SMEs in particular are really important to the UK. So that we, we have hundreds, uh, if not thousands of SMEs supporting our industry in the United, United Kingdom and they are really important to what we do, particularly when it comes to, to slightly more disruptive technologies. Um, I, I mentioned artificial intelligence, you know, we're seeing lots of companies coming forward with new technologies that can apply themselves to aerospace and make a difference, particularly in sustainability. And the SMEs themselves are, are partners within the major projects that uh, are running as well. Um, in terms of attracting companies like Gary mentioned as well, one of the examples is Zero Avia, who have uh, come to the UK as a startup. So there's much more um, startup focus at the moment with some of the new technologies that we're driving forward with aerospace because they're coming from sectors which weren't traditionally aerospace in the first place especially with things such as the potential introduction of new fuels like hydrogen for, for powering flight. Now, the industry really has gone through a shift over the last years. I can imagine that when you first joined, the conversations and big talking points in the aerospace industry were quite different to what they look like today. And of course, sustainability is the big keyword there. You're actually pursuing a very ambitious strategy called Destination Zero. Just walk us through how that looks like and what the end goal is. Yeah, look, if you had said to me, um, you know, was sustainability a big key item 10 years ago, I would have said, look, it is important, but certainly not as critical as it is today. So our current Destination Zero strategy very much focuses on, on non-CO2 and CO2 um, sustainability for aerospace. So we have three key aspects to the strategy. We have net zero technologies we focus on, such as hydrogen, and we have um, ultra efficient technologies such as uh, jet engines that work on sustainable aviation fuels. And then we have what we call cross-cutting uh, technologies that are really about manufacturing techniques and process improvements. So they're all really important to achieving that net zero target of 2050. Um, you know, it's not one piece of that, it's all of it that is required. And that is fundamentally different uh, you know, over the last 10 years, but really important that we focus on that sustainability. And, uh, and I think we're on the right path. We just need to move more fast. <laughs> it's really about finding the cleanest possible solutions because you want to encourage flying and connecting people all around the world. What do you see as some of the potential roadblocks um, in the way to getting and reaching this 2050 goal? Yeah, I mean, um, aerospace has a great history of innovation and uh, all of the newer generation aircraft have, you know, um, delivered much more sort of in efficient flight. Um, aircraft are about 80% more efficient now than they ever were when, when we first went into the jet age. Um, each new aircraft delivers about 15 to 20% efficiency sort of um, improvements. Um, so we're, we're striving to continue to push hard uh, to improve. As Gary says, um, a lot of that is around the sort of normal efficiency improvements, uh, pushing aerodynamics for the future. Uh, but also there's this huge focus now on fuel itself and sustainable aviation fuels and uh, the introduction of potential new fuels, which would be zero carbon fuels, such as the use of hydrogen, which would appear to be the most promising technology at the moment. And we're continuing to invest to understand how that uh, might be pushed forward for the future. So let's tie it back all together for our audience here and boil it down. What is the one most crucial thing that you think needs to happen in order to reach net zero by 2050? We have to move faster. So keep doing what we're doing. Um, we have all the, the constituent parts that are required to succeed, but we have to move faster. Um, that, that's literally the number one target. I think having the strategy in order to galvanise us to move in, in a common direction as well is really useful. So certainly, yeah, we're, we're pushing hard. Seems you're on the right path. You have the strategy in place and you have a few years ahead of you, but it's going to be a very busy couple of years. Thank you so much, Gary and Jacqueline, for joining us for this series today. Pleasure.